Hi, this is Petey from Bergzerk Arcade at bergzerkarcade.com, and today I just wanted to go over our config.xml file that comes with Smartbox Server Pro. Now I've gone through and commented pretty much everything that you can do with the file. Uh, that being said, I probably would not use this for a live site. It's, it's pretty huge compared to what you really need, but I find it much easier just to look it up and go, oh, look, here are the options I can use. For me, I just find it a little bit easier. I'll include this file on the website for you to download. Pretty much the only thing you're really going to have to change is the login and password that you're going to be using for yours. But the thing I wanted to look at mostly today was the construction of your zone in rooms. So down at the bottom I have a section for the zones. For now we're just going to have the one zone, the calling stones, and you have all these other variables that you can add to it. So let's say we wanted to add another one. For instance, uh, let's do the uCount update. So what this does is it sends the user count for the zone to each client. Now if you've only got a few people on your server at any one given time, it's fine. But if you end up with hundreds and you know, thousands of people playing simultaneously, it can be quite a bandwidth hog. So we're going to turn that off. We will eventually be hooking up a database manager, and we're going to be using MySQL. Uh, that'll come a little bit later in a tutorial when we're hooking that up. Moderators, if you want to have any moderators, what you can do is just take this, pull it out of the comments, and just stick it down there. Add your moderator name, moderator password if you want more than one moderator, just cut and paste. Bets and actions. Uh, for security reasons, you might want certain events or actions suppressed on your server so that the client won't know exactly what's happening. I've added a complete list of the events and actions that I could find so far. If you keep going through, characters avoid usernames right here. Also in game rooms, or any room at all. Uh, the max length of a username the max length of a room name. This is something they recommend that you turn off for production sites, but for now we're going to turn it on for our test site. If you want to have an embedded buddy list, here are some of the options I found for that. Uh, here we go, rooms. I'm only going to have one static room by default. That's going to be my main lobby. Now by default I'm setting it pretty high. You can have up to a million users simultaneously connected. Now you can do this because you're going to be running the room in limbo mode, which means there's not going to be any public chat, there's not going to be a whole lot of updates going up to the user. It's basically just a container where when people first log on, this is where they go. It's temporary, and I've gone through and listed a lot of the options that can be used. Now there are three basic type of rooms you can create. Uh, not every option is available to every room. Uh, you can read about those in the documentation. And one of the most important things is extensions. Since we're going to be using Java extensions, I've gone ahead and created my base extension right here. And one of the more important parts, extensions. I've gone ahead and created one extension already and I've added it right here. But we'll be going over that in another tutorial. Now if you're happy with the settings you currently have set, I'd save it off to your server under the server folder. Make sure it's called config.xml. And then restart SmartFox Server Pro. Okay, here I am in SmartFox Server Pro. And we'll go to the Zone browser. And right here is the zone we can we created. As you'll notice, it has one extension called the lobby, and we're going to default view. So here we go. That's our zone that we created. The zone name, whether it's active or not. Uh, you count update, buddy list, and to name the, all your variables are right here. You can also go into the extension view. There's our one extension we've made so far. You can reload the extension turn it on and off. So far now we've got our server installed, our config file set up, and 
an entry for our first extension. The next tutorial we'll start going over the extension. Till then, have fun.